Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. In this lab, we will take a basic look at CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol. CDP is a Cisco proprietary protocol. It is used to share information about other directly connected Cisco equipment, such as the operating system version and the interfaces by which they are connected. There is also a vendor-neutral protocol called LLDP, or Link Layer Discovery Protocol, which I will talk about in another video. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching this video if you have trouble, or watch it after to check your solution. Step 1 is to use CDP to identify which interfaces are used to connect the routers and switches. CDP can only display directly connected neighbors. So switch 1 should have one neighbor, R1. R1 should have two neighbors, switch 1 and R2. R2 should have two neighbors, R1 and switch 2. And switch 2 should have one neighbor, R2. Let's check on switch 1 first. Enable. Now let's use the command show CDP neighbors. As you can see, switch 1 has one neighbor, R1. It is connected to the Fast Ethernet 01 interface. Remember, local interface means the interface on this device, switch 1. Under Capability, there is an R, and if you check the Capability Codes list up here, you can see that that means router. Also, check the Port ID. This is the interface of the remote device, in this case, R1. So. Now we know switch 1 is connected to R1 by its Fast Ethernet 01 interface, and it's connected to R1's Fast Ethernet 00 interface. Let's hop on R1 now. Enable. Show CDP neighbors. R1 has two neighbors, switch 1 and R2. It's connected to switch 1 via the Fast Ethernet 00 interface, which we already learned from switch 1. It's connected to R2 by its serial 20 interface, and it's connected to R2's serial 20 interface as well. Let's do the same on R2. Enable Show CDP Neighbors. As we already saw in R1, the two routers are connected by their serial 20 interfaces. Also, R2 is connected by its Fast Ethernet 00 interface to Switch 2's Fast Ethernet 01 interface. Finally, let's go on Switch 2. Enable Show CDP Neighbors. As we already saw, Switch 2 is connected via its Fast Ethernet 01 interface to R2's Fast Ethernet 00 interface. That's all for step one. Step two is to determine which side of the connection between R1 and R2 is DCE and which is DTE. I mentioned in a previous lab that serial connections have a DCE or data communications equipment side and a DTE or data terminal equipment side. Remember that the important difference is that the DCE side has to provide the clock rate of the connection. We don't use CDP for this. It's just a bit of review. Let's go on R1. Show controllers S20. Remember that the routers are connected by their serial 20 interfaces. As you can see, R1 is in fact the DCE side of the connection. Now let's set the clock rate to 64 kilobits per second. Conf T, interface S20, clock rate 64,000. That's it. Step 3 asks us what the default CDP send and hold timers are and to confirm it with a show command. You may have learned these timers in your studies, but let's check on a device to make sure. I'll type end to go back to privileged exec mode here on R1. Now let's use the command show CDP interface. This gives us information about all interfaces, their status, whether CDP is activated on them or not, 
and their send and hold times. All of these interfaces have the default setting. And as you can see, that is a send time of 60 seconds and a hold time of 180 seconds. So CDP advertisements will be sent out of each interface that is up once every 60 seconds. Also, if R1 doesn't receive an advertisement on a particular interface within 180 seconds, it will assume that whatever neighbor that was there no longer is. That's all for step three. Step four says to disable CDP globally on R1 and attempt to view CDP neighbors. So let's go into global configuration mode, conf t. The command to enable CDP is CDP run, although it's enabled by default. We want to disable it, and that is done with no CDP run. Now let's check CDP neighbors. Do show CDP neighbor. We get a message indicating that CDP is not enabled. R1 won't send any advertisements and will ignore any it receives. Step five is to enable CDP globally again on R1 and immediately view the CDP neighbors. CDP run. Do show CDP neighbors. We re-enabled CDP, but no neighbors appear. Why is that? Well, because the CDP send time is 60 seconds by default, it can take a bit for our neighbors to appear again. If we were to wait a minute and enter the command again, they would appear. Step six is to disable CDP on the switch interfaces connected to PCs. Because CDP sends information about the device, for security purposes, it is a good idea to disable it where it isn't needed. Two PCs are connected to each switch. So let's go on switch one first. Conf T. Now, we don't want to disable CDP globally, so we won't use no CDP run. We want to only disable it on fast ethernet 03 and 04. We have to use interface configuration mode for this. Since we'll be using the same command on each interface, let's configure both at the same time. You can do this by configuring an interface range. You can enter interface range configuration mode for fast ethernet 03 and 04 with this command. Interface range F03 space hyphen space four. As you can see, we are now in interface range configuration mode. This is very convenient when you're doing the same configurations on multiple interfaces. Now, CDP enable is used to enable CDP on an interface, but it is enabled by default. To disable, we once again use no in front of the command. No CDP enable. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to switch two and do the same thing. Conf T, interface range F03 to four. No CDP enable. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.